Hey, I'm Devon Franklin. And I'm Megan Good Franklin. And we're the authors of the new book, The, the Wait. Wait. And you're plugged in to bossup.com. <laughs> It's a little bit of everything. I mean, it's a, it is a relationship guide, primarily. I mean, the only reason why we share our story is to help other people in their love life, in their relationship. So that's the goal. It's not an autobiography. It's just, you know, this is what we did. This is, was the game changer mm -hmm. for us. Here's how we did it, and here's why we think that it would be a blessing to you. He had started... A long time ago. <laughs> I was on it independent and then she had started. Yeah. You know, I, I believe the Word of God. I want to do everything that I, that I believe that I should be doing. But I was picking and choosing, especially in this area, because it was the hardest area to gain control of yourself. And, you know, you have that, well, everyone else is, you know, doing it. So it's like, I feel like God understands. And so that's what put me on my path. Yeah, and, and I, you know, was very similar. I mean, I started, you know, much uh, Earlier, I started in my 20s, my early 20s, and uh, I felt like if I'm obedient to God, uh, and if I offer up my, literally offer my body as a sacrifice in order to receive His best, what would happen? And I do believe that over time I have received His best, and I'm sitting next to His best right here. Let me tell you this, temptation doesn't go away once you get married. It doesn't. And I think that when you look at the divorce rate now, and the divorce rate, you know, is at 50%, and I think that a lot of it has to do with how we date. And and, and not getting some issues managed and, and dealt with during the dating process, but then carry over into marriage. So for me, when I was practicing the weight, you know, one of the number one things was to remember why I'm doing it. It's definitely tough because especially coming into a relationship in and I already felt in my heart that that was my husband. It, for Who's me. That? Yeah, you. Oh, okay. Hey, bye. <laughs> But for me, it almost made it even harder because it's not like I'm just dating and I'm attracted to someone. It's like, I believe this person is my husband. So on top of that, you know, you're waiting and, and it's difficult, you know. Um, and for me, I wasn't as good at it as he was because he had, you know, been doing it longer. And so what I learned is that over time, it did get easier. Um, what I learned was, you know, keeping focused on what is the goal? What do I really want? And in any split second, am I gonna make the choice to just double back and go back to what I was doing before, which ultimately yielded me the result that I wasn't you know, happy with. And because I wanted to really honor God and not just do things my way, but try doing them His way. I mean, I think it'll bring a lot of clarity. You know, again, I think that, that the weight does allow you to weed out exactly who people are. So if anything, I think that it would just clarify the conversation. It would bring um, more people who are like-minded together, people who want the same goal. I think it would only just help that in a large way. And, and I also feel that this idea of, okay, there's a scarcity of men. You know, and you said black love of black men. And, and this idea that you had mentioned that, okay, if I'm a black woman and there's a scarcity, that means I'm in competition for a limited resource. And that ideology is what produces dysfunction in our community. And I think it's very, very important for men and women to step back and look at, okay, what do I want? Let me be honest about what I want. And especially as a man, not play. What about getting back into the business of, of really knowing that love is possible and love isn't determined about, determined what happens in the bedroom or what happens on the dance floor? That real love is earned and real love is, is something that you have to cherish and real love is something that you have to invest in. Yeah, I think it's important to do all of the above. It is important to produce, write, create, market, distribute our own content and at the same time continue to make our voice known about having a voice and a place in the, in the main Hollywood system. I think that when you look at Oscar So White, it's an indication of Hollywood So White. Hollywood has a long way to go when it comes to this issue of diversity because when you look at the network system, when you look at the, the film system, the talent agency system, the management system, there are no people of color making decisions. And this is something that Hollywood has to change because in order to stay in business and to remain relevant, the audience is already diverse and demanding more diversity. Amen, I agree. I think the most important thing to me is the conversation that's being had because of it. And I think that it's a conversation that needs to happen. You know, growing up in this business, and I was saying this earlier, I've been told flat out on more than one occasion that I couldn't play the lead because I was black. 
and because we don't sell overseas or whatever it may be. And then on the flip side, you know, I, by the grace of God, I've been able to participate in this massive shift in the last two, three years of seeing more uh, black, I mean, Asian, Indian people on, on television. And so it's it's interesting because of the shift, while, while it, it's crazy that it's 2016 yeah. and that that shift is just now happening, you know, and, um, you know, again, it's it's still a blessing that it is happening and, ho and hopefully it will continue to move us forward. I believe that it will and I'm glad that the conversation is started. Um, and I don't think it's fair to say that the whole academy is racist, but I think it's, it's fair to say that things need to change.